My name is Dan Hirsch, President of the Committee to Bridge the Gap. And I am outraged by both the abrogation of the law and by the substance of this proposal. Uh, you folks have been given a dog and pony show tonight, an hour of our two-hour time, where they're supposed to listen to us, you've been listening to their spin and misrepresentations about what's being done. Let me first talk about the claims Mr. Johnson made about trying to finally comply with the law. He mentioned a law called CERCLA, that's the Superfund law, and a 1995 joint policy that DOE had committed to cleaning up all of this site consistent with EPA's Superfund criteria. For a many years now, his department has thumbed its nose at that requirement. And now he's announced to us that for the last two buildings, they will supposedly comply. Well, that's false in two ways. One is they're not complying, as I will disclose in a moment. And secondly, under that joint policy, the entire site was supposed to be cleaned up consistent with EPA's criteria. And so they're saying, we're not going to clean up the rest of it. We're going to leave all that contamination behind. We have frozen you out of the public process for years. But for the last two little buildings, we're going to pretend to let you into the process, and we pretend that we will comply with CERCLA and the 95 agreement. And when I say pretend, let me give you a few specifics. Those of you who came to the meeting got this postcard. There's not a word on the postcard about this document called the ECA, its availability, or a comment period expiring on February 28th. It invites you to come to a meeting. When you arrive, there's a copy of the ECA. As you sit here, you have no time to read it. They claim that this is a meeting to get your comments on a document you can't possibly have reviewed. They published it. Their sole public notice was two fine print ads in the newspaper. The first ad said, if you want more information, go to a certain website. If you click on that website, you get emptiness. It doesn't work. The second ad, when you click on, go to the website, you do get their website. But if you did it when the ad ran, there's not a word about the ECA. They showed you a moment ago what the website shows today. For the first two weeks after the notice went out, when you went to the website, there wasn't anything about the ECA on it. You would go to a section called Cleanup, and it would open up a page that says, Under Construction. So they ask you to comment on something you haven't seen. They're now telling you you have seven days to get comments in on this document and that administrative record. They're telling you today. The handout that they gave out to you as you walked in said, how do I comment? You can comment today on the ECA, which they say they're handing out today. And none of you can read it because you've been sitting here listening to them. Or you can send in comments within seven days. Now, that's not what the CERCLA law requires. They didn't notify, to the best of my knowledge, a single state legislator or federal legislator about the availability of the ECA or the comment period. They didn't notify a single reporter. They didn't send a press release. They didn't make a phone call. There is a mailing list that has been generated for everybody who's concerned about this site. They did not send out a mailing saying, we have a document, you have 30 days, they didn't send out copies of the document. Instead, they sent out a misleading postcard saying, come to a public meeting without mentioning that there is a document, how to find it, or what the comment period is. So they're pretending that this is a session for you to comment on it. And so my first request is that you comply with the law, that you re-notice this, that you mail out to your mailing list a notice that there is this document, that it is available, now finally on the website, and I, I ask you to actually mail out the document and announce a 45-day comment period from the time that people get it, that you notify each legislative office of this matter as well, and that you notify the press. This is otherwise simply a sham. Two fine print ads in the newspaper with links to websites that don't work, and a public meeting where they tell you to comment on something that they handed out a minute before you walked in. Well, there's an old saying, this is for public, this is a different kind of meeting. You have a transcriber. I was just going to ask if you wanted anybody to respond to your first question. No, th this is my public comment. I hope that you will positively say, yes, we'll get an uh, extension of the comment period and you'll make the documents available. You mentioned that the administrative record is available now, finally, on the website, but when you just showed us the page, 
And when I went on the website, it tells us you have to go to the reading room, the library, to see the administrator record. So I'm not even sure that there's the statement that is now available on the website is true. What you showed us on the website says the opposite. You can't get it from the website. So. Exactly two weeks ago. Excuse me? We had a notice issued on January 26th or January 27th that there was a 30-day comment period on the ECA and to go to the website to obtain it. It was not on the website at that time at all. Okay. Now let's get to the substance of what they're proposing. And they slid over it really beautifully. Really beautifully. The first thing that Phil Rutherford told you is they're going to get rid of all the radioactivity. All the contamination is going to be removed. But then he shows you a chart showing you how much radioactivity they're going to leave behind. He told you that the Environmental Protection Agency has signed off on this. False. EPA, in December of 2003, issued a detailed letter, which they continue to stand by, saying that this site will not be safe for release for unrestricted use, which is their plan to make it residential that they have not adequately characterized the site, that the only safe use would be limited day hikes with restrictions on picnicking, and that they have not followed the EPA requirements for cleanup, and that they are not using safe and protective cleanup standards. None of that has been revoked by EPA. They told us just in the last days that they stand by that letter. DOE has ignored all of those EPA comments. In January, EPA issued a second letter dealing with this particular project, not presenting any of the prior comments. It said that this ECA, E-E-C-A, a term from CERCLA, violates EPA's guidance on how you're supposed to do these kind of cleanups. DOE has not done anything to fix that. It continues to violate it. It has issued what they call a streamlined ECA. Let me tell you what is meant by streamlined. The fundamental principle of an ECA is that you're supposed to identify the proposed cleanup level, how much they're going to leave behind the radioactivity so the public can comment on it. The actual ECA that they've given us here says, after the comment period expires, a quote-unquote risk management decision will be made as to how much radioactivity to leave behind. It doesn't say who will make it, it doesn't say how, or what criteria. It simply says that someone after you no longer have an opportunity to comment, will decide how much radioactivity to leave behind. And as Phil has indicated in his presentation, their intention is to leave 100 times as much as the, uh, uh, the table that he's shown you for 10 minus 6. And if I could, is it possible for me to get that table again, the one that compares 10 minus 6 and 10 minus 4? Because let me tell you what he didn't tell you. First of all, he said that that is the EPA 10 to the minus 6 risk goal. It's false. EPA has said over and over and over again that these numbers, the numbers you need for americium-241, cobalt-60, cesium-134, and so on, have to be rate based on the land use that is feasible for this property um, and that would produce the greatest exposure. This land is zoned RA5, Rural Agricultural 5. Small ranch shafts where you can have goats and gardens and orchards which is, in fact, the use for a number of people around the site at present. It is the current zoning. Under EPA guidance, you have to use that current zoning if that produces the most restrictive doses, the most restrictive cleanup. What Phil didn't tell you is that these numbers here are not based on current zoning, not based on RA5, but are based on suburban residential and that these numbers are a hundred times higher for many of those radionuclides than what EPA would permit. Instead of being a 10 to the minus 6 risk, as he says up here, most of those numbers are in fact 10 to the minus 4, hundred times higher risk already as the point of departure. 